all right what up y'all back for another video and i'm finally doing it like i said i was gonna do it in like two podcasts to go um i'm gonna review the top 10 albums of uh 2021 and uh we're gonna start off real quick with uh certified lover boy now this is off purely like enjoyment wise now this might not be like you know top 10 for a lot of other people but there are certain like tracks i like off this album like you only live twice champagne poetry and uh uh no friends in the industry those three songs uh were like my most streamed songs of this year that's what i went off of on spotify just to see what i was listening to the 10 albums that came out this year most listened to and this is one of them in which it's it's a sad but also a good thing that I I listen to this album because this album there are a lot of tracks that are very like shit but there are a couple good tracks that are not shit that I personally love. Now I like Way Too Sexy but I listen to it too often to the point where it's just it's super annoying now. But in its time that I liked it I did like it a lot because the production was good. I don't care what Andy Fantano said. All right, he's not the fucking music maniac master. All right, it's to whoever you listen to and you think you enjoy. He just didn't enjoy it. And I liked it for a certain amount of time and then it got annoying because I listened to it too often. I definitely streamed that song like 45, 46 times. So, yeah. Um, I'm not going to give this album a rating because if I already give it a rating, then that means this whole top 10 list would just be out of the picture. So this goes off pure enjoyment. So this is at number 10. <laughs> okay, so number 9. I have uh, self-titled Ben Staples. This album is very good. Uh, ben Staples talks about like his own problems with his mental health and his life on what he's going through, and with very like uh, industrial uh, beats and very. Now, I won't say generic because that means it's kind of I'm kind of shitting on Kenny Beats, which also who also produced this entire album. Uh, yeah, on his uh, credits on producing, uh, is producing is phenomenal on this album. It just sounds like you know what you really listen to for this album is the lyrics. Now, production is very good, but it's not as good as Vin Staples' rapping ability. Now, he doesn't spit fast or spit like hard bars. It's just very down to earth vibe and very real in the sense that Ben Staples is talking about like his mental issues and just his life on what is just going on and help him try to cope with just other stuff from the fame to where he used to live and where his friends were in certain situations and stuff like that so very good album now for number eight the off season um I like J. Cole not a lot um, the off season when it first came out, I didn't like it too much. I had a couple pick and choose tracks, like uh, "My Life," which is just a lot part two. Um, fuck, there's one track. Um, fuck. Uh, oh yeah, uh, there's a Mari I like a lot too. I started listening to more. Hold up, sorry, I wasn't really that prepared. I just thought I'd put out a video with this. Um. I like the Mari, uh, Pride is the Devil with Lil Baby's verse where he just comes in. Like, if I didn't know Lil Baby was going to be on the song, and I just heard him fucking come out of nowhere, the transition from J. Cole's verse instantly into his, oh my god. Lil Baby kind of destroys J. Cole on the track. Even though I don't know what he's saying a little bit of the time, he just is fucking spitting, and it's crazy. And the beat is also very fucking good. And then the Climb Back, which is a single that came out like a year before, like six months, seven months before. And then, uh, Let Go of My Hand is probably my favorite track. Very emotional. I love the vocals from J. Cole. And his verses, very good. Number eight. All right, now for number seven. I have, uh, Use For Yourself by IDK. Um, for his, I think it's, yeah, his second or third studio album from what I know is very good. From what I heard last of him, it was from, there's a song called 24 that was in, I think, one of the Madden games that everyone liked. 
Yeah, and it was called Is He Real? Which I was like one of my favorite albums out of 2019. And what I was introduced by in 2019. And he's a very good rapper, very good artist. His influences, you could definitely tell who he got it from. And for this album, is very good. I like the deluxe a lot more. So we just added on into it. But my favorite like highlights of the album are Saint, uh, S- Santa Monica Boulevard. Uh, Proud of the Bang with Young Thug. Uh, Red with Westside Gun, MF Doom, and J Electronica. Uh, Puerto Rico, Temporary Love. Uh, Dogs Don't Lie. And uh, Two Cents, uh, King Alfred Plan, Serial. Serial was a single that came up before, but it's on the deluxe, so I want to count it. Rain and uh, Dinner Date. The whole like part of the second part of the album, which is the deluxe, is phenomenal with features. And I wouldn't say the features overtake IDK on some of the songs, but they kind of do and don't. Like Royce to 5'9 has a way better part on Dogs Don't Lie than he does. And then Dinner Date, IDK overtakes Tribute Red, but Tribute Red plays his part in a chorus, and I think a hook it is. And it's very good. And then Lil Yachty has like the smallest part on um, King Alfred Plan. Because uh, I remember I heard the snippet, it's like, bring Obama back, tell him bring Obama back. And then fucking Lil Yachty just goes, oh no, those days, I don't know what Tinko says. And it's just, it's not, the song's good, it's just, it's not a good part for Lil Yachty. Like, if Lil Yachty spit a verse in that song, oh my god, this would be a way more stream song. But it wasn't. So, personally, I think, you know, this album deserves a fucking seven. Didn't mean that to fucking, I just cussed. <laughs> Number six, I have Isaiah Rashad, The House is Burning. This album, when it came out, dude, I was listening to it for like a month and a half. And then when the Deluxe came out, oh my god. The most streamed song off the album was, uh, it was, the, it was from the Deluxe. And it had Project Pat, I think, on it. Right? Yeah, Project Pat and Juicy J. Which are two people that are part of... Uh, uh, 3-6 Mafia. And uh, Rip Young has... Uh, a sample from one of the 3-6 Mafia songs. I forget what song it is. But... Um, Isaiah Rashad... I don't know if he produced it or someone else produced it. But it, they did a very good job sampling... The... Uh, the part of the Three Six Mafia song, and uh, just you know, Isaiah Rashad's verse is very good. And then Project Pat and GCJ overtake the remix, but I say originally the song's really good, but Rip Young the remix is really good too. And then uh, other from the Deluxe's Donuts uh, and Jordan Favors, I think how you pronounce it, I don't really know. And then Score is very good. All Herb is very good. Headshots is my second favorite song on the album. My first. It's probably gonna be we lean with or a uh, lay with ya, lay with ya. God damn, I fucking sound so white. Um, with Duck Deuce, which is the guy who did uh, oh, fuck, uh, Crunk A Dead, which is the meme where he's on the table in music videos he's like, oh yeah, yo, 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 and he fucking gets lifted up off the fucking desk. And his style of rapping is fucking insane. Like a bunch of new rappers that came out this year that are blowing up, like uh, Baby Keem, Duck, uh, Duke Deuce. And a couple other rappers, Maxwell Cream, their voice doesn't really sound like any other rapper that I've heard before. Maybe there's some influence here and there, but from what I've heard, it doesn't sound anything that I've heard before. But it just sounds very good, and I enjoyed uh, Lean With Ya and the rest of the tracks on The House Is Burning. So, very good album. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. 5, I got the Melodic Blue. Now, you either love or hate this album. And personally... I love this album. Why? Because the beats, 90, not 85, 90% of the beats were made by Baby Keem, which you got to give props to. Most of the lyrics were written by Baby Keem, if not all of them, I think, from what I know. And uh, Family Ties. That's really all I have to say. Family Ties is Song of the Year. And if it does not win, I think it's not made for a Grammy for, I don't think it's Song of the Year, but Rap Song of the Year, I'm going to be pissed because seriously, this song went so fucking hard. When it came out, bro, oh my god, the first week, everyone was geeking about it. Because Kendrick Lamar was finally back from a silence. I am the Omega. Four letters. I'll let you know him better. I've been talking the pandemic. I've been 
social gimmicks overnight activists yeah like the shit goes so insanely hard there's three beat transitions baby keem fucking lays out kendrick i mean that i mean that by uh he has a better verse than kendrick and i know for some kendrick fans like oh my god dude kendrick had a better part kendrick can have one little loss i know baby keem's not that good of a rapper but he was spitting fucking bars he sounded better on the rest of the beats than Kendrick Lamar did. So I gotta give props for Baby Keem for overtaking Kendrick Lamar on this track and fucking wow, Chef's Kiss. I love this album. Now the only track that I really dislike and hate is Pink Panties. That song and, and the second part of Trademark USA. I love Trademark USA, but I'm a hot girl. That shit is so fucking painfully annoying. But I mean Baby Keem Trademark USA is really good. But Pink Panties, like if this if Pink Panties wasn't on this album, I put it a, maybe a, a, maybe one tier higher, one tier maybe. But overall, good album highlights: Scapegoats, um, uh, Sixteen, Vent, Family Ties, Trademark USA, and the uh, one song he did with Brent Fias and Don Tolliver. Those songs are also really good. All right, then ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, four. We have Bo Jackson. Now I had a pick between Bo Jackson and. Uh, did you put a second album that's like a sequel to this to Bo Jackson where the the cover is just Bo Jackson on like the Madden like NES game. But I personally like this one better. I think the beats are better, which is also produced by the Alchemist, which I think is the best producer of uh this year or twenty twenty one, maybe even twenty twenty two, I don't know what to see, but twenty twenty one Alchemist was producing fucking albums after albums, man. He even put out his own music, and I was like, fucking damn. This shit goes fucking hard. Now, uh, I gotta say, Bully James has really been coming up the past three years. I only been listening to him for about a year, but from what I've seen from his older stuff, he is really having a major come up, and he's on tour with uh, The Alchemist, Earl Sweatshirt, and Action Bronson. And, wow, man. This album is so fucking good. The storytelling, the lyricism... And then the fucking beats behind his rapping just fits so well. And the features, too. Uh, I think Brick Mile to Montana uh, with Benny the Butcher, I think it's called. Oh, the beat, it goes so fucking hard, bro. It's fucking amazing. Love that album. Um, But, yeah, okay. Number three, we have LP. Now, do I like the other side better that's on YouTube and SoundCloud? I hadn't listened to it, so I wouldn't know. So I don't even know what I'm talking about it. But LP is third. I fucking love this album. Uh, fucking, I gotta look up the tracks. I don't. I'm not really good with track names. I probably should have had this like you know, already open, but I didn't. But yeah, uh, most of this album is very good. Like Dirty is fucking phenomenal. Nemo is good. Rebound is good. OG is good. Uh, sick, nervous, and broke is good. Nice BMT, cutie pie, uh, bald remix. Bald by itself is good, but bald remix with Denzel Curry. Denzel Curry fucking get dude. He just fucking wipes out JPEG Mafia. It's not like they're having like a battle who has a better verse, but it kind of just gives him gives it to Denzel Curry because JPEG Mafia's verse gets cut out in half and puts Denzel's in for a minute and a half, to a minute and forty five. And Denzel Curry goes fucking insane on this song. He is spitting his fucking head off. Just spitting shit that I... Oh, my God. And the beat, too. I, th- I think it was also produced by JPEG Mafia. The, oh, my God. This is one of my most streamed songs of this year. I think it's in, like, the top 15, top 20 of this year. It is so good, man. Like, uh, this is JPEG Mafia's best work, in my opinion. Because I like his industrial... Like, you know, hip-hop rap style. But it's just, like, I can't be, like, sitting in class, like, doing work. And then hear, like, a bunch of fucking... I hear Soldier Boy win in Fortnite. If you guys understand what I'm saying, then you understand what I'm saying. But he samples the funniest shit. But, like, just to hear that, and then a bunch of screaming, and then a bunch of fucking, like, distorted, like, 808s, and, like, a bunch of shit going on, and a, other noises, and JPEG Mafia screaming and shit... It's too much. I mean, I like that music too, but I mean, LP is just like a simmer down boom bap slash industrial rap album that I like a lot. And the production of this whole album is phenomenal. 
and the lyricism from JPEG Mafia and the realness of JPEG Mafia's raps. I love his story and how he became a rapper too. I'm not going to make a separate video on it. Y'all could look it up. But JPEG Mafia is a fucking pristine rapper in the past three, four years. He's just been fucking phenomenal. Now, for a second, we have Donda. Um, This was my second or third most streamed album of this year. Uh, I'm not getting sick of this album at all. I just hadn't listened to it in a while. But for the for an album being 22 to I think it was cuz the the deluxe has I think 30 if not 31 songs on it and the original album has 27. Now, the layout of the album is fucking weird with like part 1 and part 2s and shit. I don't know, man, but the highlights on this album are fucking crazy, dude. Cuz you you have Jail, Off the Grid, Hurricane, Praise God, Believe What I Say, 24, uh Moon Heaven and Hell, Keep My Spirit Alive, uh, Come to Life, Pure Souls, No Child Left Behind. Like, that's already uh, 11, 12 songs that are just fucking complete bangers. The rest aren't bad. They're just not as good as those. And a lot of those songs, I give like three or four of those songs like tens in my opinion. Maybe like nine and a half. But holy shit, man. Kanye really went crazy on this album. I mean, him himself, I got to give it... Oh. I gotta give it to the features he got for people who got in this album. Like, it's Kanye West. He can probably get fucking anyone to do a song. Like, he did it with Marilyn Manson and the baby. So, I mean, if he could do that, he can get anyone on his album. Now, the features is just what shows off this album. Now, Kanye has his solo songs, like, uh, Believe What I Say with the phenomenal Lauren Hill sample. And then, uh, 24. And, uh, Come to Life. Just... Oh my god. Come to Life is so good. I think this is probably that's probably my first or second favorite song off this album from Donda from Kanye West. Cuz the lyrics Kanye's singing too. Like he hasn't perfected his singing, but it's not to the point where it's like bad. Like you you could take his singing. It's not bad at all. I mean, it's better than mine. But what I'm trying to say is Kanye on this album is very good. He might not be in a good mental state now, and he should probably seek help. But it's whatever at this point. But this album is very good, and I fucking, oh my god. Just like the features, Fabio Foreign, uh, Roddy Rich, Travis Scott, uh, Baby Keem, Playboy Cardi, uh, West Side Gun, Conway the Machine, J Electronica, The Baby. Who else? I'm leaving so many people. Oh, yeah. Don Tolliver. Kid Cudi. Uh, Tori. Or is it Tori or Moray or something like that? I don't know. But he does a lot of vocals on this album. And uh, the production on this album is insane. Kanye does a lot of the production on this album. Because he does get helped out every once in a while. But I like to say that he probably does most of it. And you could probably tell if he kind of but i mean all i know is that kind of put a lot into this album and it was announced like a year and a half maybe two years ago and now it's finally come out and i was so happy when this album come out because it was supposed to come out a month and a half before and it never did so we never thought it was going to come out and then it randomly came out on a sunday morning at 9 or 10 a.m and i fucking love this album from the day it came out so second first we have call me if you get lost Every track on this album is phenomenal. Not counting the skits, obviously, because they're skits. But every album, even Wilshire, it's an eight-minute song, and I don't hate it. I like the just the mellow, uh, the mellow production on it, and uh, Tyler Crater's verse about telling his story from when he first started out rapping to where he is now, and how he's aged. This album's just about. Just how he's just fucking, he's now grown as a person. And he brings back every element from every single album he had and puts it together and makes this masterful album that I love a lot. And has amazing features. And I mean amazing. Like Lil Wayne, uh, 42 Doug. Even for a young boy to be in this album on What's Your Name, I never thought 
a day in my life that young boy would go that soft. Like, oh my god. Like, I mean, everyone's got a soft spot. But I never knew a young boy was just like coming up. What is your name? What do you bring? Did you know what you mean? I don't do anything that you please. Ah, oh, so fucking good. And then you have uh, Pharrell Williams, which is probably my least favorite part in the whole album, like just feature wise. And then you have uh, Uzi and uh, fucking Domo Genesis, or Domo Genesis, who was an Odd Future member when it was still a thing. And he's still a good rapper by himself, don't get me wrong. But this whole album is good. From Sir Baudelaire all the way to Wilshire, not counting the skits. Every single song is a fucking banger. I don't think Wilshire is the outro, though. The outro, uh, I forget what the outro is. But, yeah, even Tito touched down on the album, too. I don't, well, I can't forget about him and Brandon Fias. And Fanta Hughes, I think her name is, who was on uh, Sweet I Thought You Wanted to Dance, who was on the second part, who was singing, and her vocals are fucking pristine, dude. They're fucking, ugh. Every time I listen to them shits, it's just so beautiful. And Tyler Crater did most production on this album. I think he has every single production credit on everything except for... Uh, the one song with Pharrell Williams and uh, Lil Uzi Vert. Because I think Pharrell Williams helped him out on that song a little bit. Called, yeah, Juggernaut. And the outro was Safari, and Safari's very good. But every single song on this album is fucking fire. Because Sir Baudelaire, I didn't like this album at the start. I mean, I did, but didn't because DJ Drama. But I started to, to know and love it, and now I've memorized like, all of DJ Drama's parts. From when he says shit. I was like, you know me, you know I'm a star baller. Dollar greater. Ah. Screaming and shit. Okay, now we're ready. Rolls Royce pull up. Black boy, how about? Like, shit is so good. So, Sir Baudelaire starts up very mellow. Gets you ready for the album. Goes in the Corso, a fucking hard-hitting song. Which in concert was phenomenal. Because they went to the concert. Go watch the video. Uh, Lemonhead, 42 Doug the Feature. Phenomenal. I didn't know if I was going to like it or not because personally, I don't like 42 Doug's voice that much. But with the horns on this song, go fucking hard, bro. Like, you say, you say pandemic. Yo, you want to see pandemic? Oh. Then what's your name? The slow. I'm not going to try. But what's your name is very good. Love fucking young voice feature. And Ty Dollar signs on it, but, you know, he has. A little bit of vocals in there, but still sounds beautiful. Lumberjack, when this single came out, I was in summer school. I streamed this probably like fucking 30 times, 35 times in one day, and I'm still not sick of it. I still love it. Pull up. Black boy, how about? Shout out to my mother and my father didn't pull out. Like, ugh. The beat. Now, the beat, I found out, was originally, uh, I think it was two bags of blood or two, some. Uh, this rap group that had people from like Wu Tang and uh, other rappers from different groups come together and make this album. And uh, the Ariza or no Jizza Jizza produced most of the album, if not all of it. And uh, he made this beat that's on Lumberjack, not for Lumberjack, but from when the album came out that they put out in the nineties. It's so hard. It's fucking amazing. Uh, Hot Wind Blows the production. Lil Wayne's verse. This is my favorite Lil Wayne verse that he's ever spit on a Tyler Crater album. A Smuckers is very good verse with Lil Wayne, but Hot Wind Blows is so much better. It's shorter, but he just is nonstop going, and it's crazy. And then Massa. Oh yeah, the the growth on this song. It sounds like an MF Doom beat and then grows into something more and he starts fucking screaming about shit. Now he's just grown as a person, which I fucking love. And then run it up. Listening to it in concert is very good. And through the headphones, it's very good. But, I mean, not saying everything, if you go to concert and listen to it, it's better. But you could hear more of the sounds from run it up. Like, if you have a subwoofer in your car and you run it up, like, the shit goes, we go run it up. We gonna run it up. And Tio Touchdown, he, I don't hate him. But he didn't really need to be on the song. Like, him as a person, he's very cool. But, like, he doesn't ruin the album at all. It's just, he's not really needed on the song. But I, just, I don't really care for it. But it's whatever. Manifesto, I like the start of it. 
little white bitch gonna say, you need, need to, to say, say something, something about, about that. that. You need, need to, to say, say something about black bitch. Shut the fuck Fucking good. And then Domo Genesis verse, fucking fire. Uh, Sweet, I Thought You Wanted to Dance, which I think is the second longest song on the album. Which there's a seven minute song and an eight minute song on the album. And I thought I was going to be bored of the seven minute song. No. Brent Fias's part is amazing. Tyler Crear's part is amazing. Fanny Hughes' part is amazing. The second part of the song, I Thought You Wanted to Dance, is fucking phenomenal. It's probably my uh, second, maybe third spot on the album for my favorite. And then uh, Rise of Daisy World. Oh, yeah. A rise to the top. It's a very upbringing song. Because he's just telling everyone, like, rise up, bruh. Like, be prepared, man. Like, it it only goes up from here. Like, just know if you're down, you're going to rise up. And you'll be good. And Daisy World is pretty good on the song. <laughs> then Juggernaut with Fred Williams and Tyler Crater producing this phenomenal ass beat. And it goes hard. And has Lil Uzi on the song. Like, oh my god. Skirt! Don't be using my feet. Don't be using my feet. Do you want me? Do you want to eat it? Elite? Do I save my feet? You eat my. Ugh. Goes crazy. The trap song of the century. Now nah, I'm playing. It's really good. Wilshire, very good. Eight song. Uh, he just reflects on uh, his self back in 2009 all the way to now. From the fucking 13 year experience from how he started out in rap to where he is now. A very humble, down to earth human. Who now has realized that he didn't fully, you know, understand himself as a teenager. He was a teenager up until he was like 22, 23, as he said in Massa. So now this is him fully accepting who he is as a person now. And he's going to be like that until his last days. So, then Safari is a fucking amazing outro. And then if you... Uh, it transitions back into the start of the album. It sounds very good. So, uh, yeah, this is my favorite album of the year. Sorry for rambling about it, but seriously, I saw the concert and I listened to this album multiple times. Most streamed album of this year. It is just too good not to talk this much about. So, yeah, hopefully y'all enjoyed the video. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll talk to y'all later. See ya.